So, hello everybody, welcome to the Jenkins user conference. I will, we will start by introducing ourselves. So, I'm Nicolas Delof, hello. I'm the guy with the orange shirt. You can see me every time in public with an orange shirt. So, even if the official color for the Jenkins user conference fairy is blue, uh, my Claude B. Fellows uh, offered me a dedicated orange t shirt. I'm senior uh, senior support engineer at CloudBiz. I'm also, also a Jenkins contributor and evangelist and so on, and a jug leader at the Rennes City in France. And I wrote a book on Apache Maven. Please buy it so I can earn one euro and few cents. So I'm uh, Mathieu Ancelin. I'm a software engineer at Sarly. Sarly is a small IT company based in uh, based near Poitiers. I don't know if you see uh, where is Poitiers. Um, <laughs> uh, one particularity of Sarly is that we uh, contribute a lot on uh, open source projects. So lately, I worked uh, a lot on uh, Jonas application server, Glassfish application server, uh, JBoss application server, and Jenkins. Uh, at Sarly, we also contribute to uh, Silent Language or uh, Selenium. I don't know if you see what is sel Selenium, and a lot of uh, projects like that. I'm also uh, a member of the Poitou Charon Jug, and I'm a member of the expert group of uh, JSR 346, which is uh, CDI 1.1. You can follow me on Twitter on uh, Trevor Resnick. So back to Jenkins in general, uh, you can see on Twitter and so on, many people saying Jenkins is a crone on steroid or similar uh, expression. Um, as you know, Jenkins can drive mostly everything that, that uh, can be expressed as a command line. Uh, so you can do mostly everything needed to take your software code, source, source code and build it, test it, analyze, deploy it on server, uh, migrate database data, monitor your, your server even, or whatever you want. And people use that to create some more than just continuous integration. That's uh, something you've probably heard about all the buzzwords around continuous deployment, continuous delivery. So let's just start this talk by by setting some, some terminology around that. When we talk about continuous integration, I'm taking the definition from Martin Flora, so uh, I, th I think so one of so, so those of you that are in the back of the room don't, can't read anything, so I've selected some few words. So continuous integration is to frequently integrate your project in an automated build system so that you can detect any errors you, in, you in inserted in the project as quickly as possible. And so you develop more rapidly a stable software. <coughs> Based on this, continuous deployment or continuous delivery are ways to go deeper in the process, not just building, not just testing, but going to production with all the steps it implies. So when we talk about continuous deployment, you are supposed to have a full chain up to production to completely automate the process. When we talk about continuous delivery, we are just saying it's uh, a bit less than continuous deployment. We are just saying that you are able to provide for every commit a, com a complete automated suite so that you just have to press a green button to go to production. This can be mostly safer, but this can be used just to select what and, wh and when you push to production. So to implement those two continuous concepts, you have to create what we call a deployment pipeline. You will automate everything so that you can take your source code from your s uh, software configuration management, build, test, validate, and deploy to dev, test, integration, staging, and then production servers. But if you do it 
in a naive implementation, your pipeline will look like this wonderful photo that says that it will take hours or maybe days up to production. Mostly, some of you already have jobs that at the beginning of the project were taking minutes and then tens of minutes and maybe hours today. And if you had some more features testing, some more performance testing and so on and so on and so on, you know that it will, at the end it will take days for a commit to go to production. So you have to rethink this pipeline to make it more efficient. First, you have to pass parameter and probably binaries from tasks to tasks, from jobs to jobs, so that all jobs don't have to rebuild all the software, but reuse the result of uh, upstream jobs. You will try to parallelize your tasks and for sure to resynchronize the, the flow. You will, in many cases, have to, uh, to, to clean up the environment for a job has completed. For example, if you run some performance testing or some functional testing, uh, after the test completed, you have to clean up the server to answer uh, reproductibility and, uh, and equivalence between all the builds. And you also have to manage the resource you are using. If, if you deploy your application to a server for any testing, the server may not be available exactly at the moment you deploy. Or any other resource may require some time to be available. So you have to wait a few and retry the job. That's not a blocker for your pipeline. You just know that there is a little instability at resource level. If you try to implement that with Jenkins, you will use a set of plugins that uh, individually taken are, are really good plugins. For example, to manage your downstream jobs, to copy artifacts between jobs, to pass parameters to the jobs you are triggering, to join after you parallelized execution, to manage the retry after failure, and so on and so on. How does this look like? The basic features you have with Jenkins is to define the downstream jobs. From my job, I want the next step is to have other jobs to be triggers, triggered. Sorry. Uh, you can use the parameterized build trigger to pass parameters. Okay, it's a small beta, but it's another checkbox. You also can enable the Naginator plugin to manage retry after failure. Then you will try to resynchronize all your parallel execution using the join plugin that itself asks you in the initial jobs to define the join job that occurs after execution of the downstream one, becoming a little complex. And then to introduce a modularization in your process, you can also use promotion. That is a very nice feature to tag some of your builds uh, for a particular task. For example, you can ask your sonar analysis to tag uh, the builds that have been checked. And at the end, what your pipeline looks like is a bit like that. Let's, let's take an example. Here. Oh. Ah. Okay, we'll have to switch off from PowerPoint. Ah, there you Do you see? Oh, color are full, but okay. Here is a typical but very simple B pipeline. I have a set of simple jobs A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And my job is about, oops, sorry, 
building source from my build flow plugin. Oh, surprising. <laughs> so what I'm doing is here. I have a promotion here that will trigger the last job, let's say, let's say the road is one. I'm doing continuous delivery at a, at a plugin level, so my last step is to release. I have, check now this plugin, okay, that's another problem. Um, I have downstream jobs, A, B, C, D, that I'm running in parallel. I'm then joining the execution back to a single job, job F. I also trigger parameters to a job E. I didn't set parameters, but I may have to. And as I know there is some issue with my SM or whatever, I have to retry the build after a failure up to three times, let's say. Okay. Did you notice what this job is really doing? The only interesting thing is here. <laughs> We have completely polluted the job with orchestration and all this stuff that we are just trying to chain a set of jobs. <coughs> so my, my job has to host my build pipeline logic first. And not in this example, I managed to put all in a single job, but you can imagine with a real world pipeline that it will be split in multiple parts. I, so I don't have a central definition of my build process. I'm using a set of plugins in this job, this one, this one, but I can't, if it becomes complex, I will hardly do the link. I don't have a visualization of what's happening. I can use the build pipeline plugin, but if you test it, you know that it don't support a large part of the plugin we have used there. And there is very complex side effect for all those plugins we are used together. Uh, for example, the join plugin will mostly work with my default downstream jobs, but if I'm using also the downstream ext and the retry and so uh, it just can't know which job where trigger and what to wait for. So what can we do? What can we do when there is something missing in Jenkins? Write a plugin and contribute. So, we will just ask you, as those men in blacks, to forget everything you know about Jenkins' build pipeline. <laughs> <laughs> and we will introduce oh, sorry, the build flow plugin. The ID. The idea is to have a dedicated entity in Jenkins where we define your build pipeline using a groovy DSL, domain-specific language, that is really focusing on defining job orchestration to be very concise so that you have a very specific view of what's happening on Jenkins. It will manage triggering jobs, waiting for completion, managing the results, and so on. And this is not yet implemented, but we want to provide a visualization of what happened. So let's demo. Let's demo. So Mathieu, please help me to create my build flow. Okay. So I have those uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, D jobs. And I would like to orchestrate my build pipeline. OK, so I create a new job. Okay, Oops. yet another job. Yeah, oh, but fuck. it's a build flow one. Oh, so I can. Name what's it. what's that? It can manage job orchestration as a dedicated entity. Whoa, yeah, I it's think fun. it's what we want to do. So I can name it. Uh, I don't know test flow. And here we go. So here I can write my uh, flow. It's uh, with our DSL. Oops. Okay. So. So um, uh, I think the, the basic structure is I would like to run job A and then job B and then job C. 
Okay, so you just have to uh, do something like that. So, job with uh, like that. Yeah. Oops. What? <laughs> yeah, we wrote documentation. Incredible. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, is it large enough? Oops. Do you want to to enlarge the the text? Like that? Mm. Uh. Like that? It's okay. Ah, it's better. No, <laughs> not too much. Ah, okay. And job C. So I'm just defining build and the name of the job, and it will happen sequentially. Okay, fine. Um, but I have a problem that my my B job may fail. I would mm. I would like to be able to to, to prevent any issue and to clean up after I have a, a job F, which to to okay. we, 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 which is designed to clean up everything that could happen in this job. Okay, so I can use the Guan keyword to Guan my my job, and uh, uh, trigger some. Cleaning job uh, if uh, the job B fail. Okay. So I can build here the uh, job F. Job F. Oops. Yeah, we don't yet have auto completion of jobs name and so on. But uh, if you have uh, an expert in uh, Code Mirror to help us provide the adequate editor, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. That's exactly the same construction that the try finally in Java. Yeah. Whatever happens inside the guard, the job F, the rescue job will always be triggered to clean up after completion. Okay, that's fine. Um, and uh, my job C also is accessing my, uh, my deployment server and I know I have connecti uh, network connectivity issues, so I would like to be able to retry the deployment because I'm uploading uh, gigabytes of uh, of data. Okay, so here you can use the retry keyword. So you just have to specify how many times you want to retry the. Okay, let's say let's say three times. Three times, okay, and you put this into a closure. So. Okay, so here the job C will be uh, retried three times if it failed three times. So if uh, it worked the first time, it will only be uh, triggered one time. Okay. And <coughs> then after my application has been deployed, I have a bunch of feature UI and performance tests to run. So as it takes many, many, many time if I do it sequentially, I would like to do it in parallel. Okay. That's the uh, D, E, and G job. Okay. So you just have to use the parallel keyword. Oh, that's a parallel! Surprise. Yeah. <laughs> Surprising me. <laughs> Who chose those names? I don't know, some very <laughs> smart guys. <laughs> so you just have to uh, use the parallel keyboard and pass uh, an array of closure. So here you can, uh, what are the jobs? Job, uh, job, job, D. D, Up. oops. Job e and G. E. And job G. Okay, so it should work. Okay, everything will happen in parallel, that's fine. Can you execute that? Yes, I can. So just, I just verify it's really running. Okay, so I just have to save my, my job. Okay. And, oops. It's ah. at the bottom, probably. Oops. Ah, okay, it's here. I just have to uh, run the... Dependency? Oh, oh. It's, uh, okay, it's, it's, it's launched. Yeah. Every... Um, yeah, you can look at the console, please. Yeah. 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 As you can see here, uh, on the console, you can see that we triggered the jobs waiting for completion. You know you are in a guard and rescue section. And on the parallel mode, we are triggering all jobs together and waiting for completion. 
So the order of completion is not necessarily the order of triggering. This is completely uh, using the scheduling capabilities of Jenkins, so probably the slaves and uh, node configuration you are using. And it was successful, great. But what about visualization? I, I saw something interesting on the previous page. Okay, that was our, our first attempt to uh, do a visualization, but uh, using uh, a JavaScript library to render the graph, and as you can see, it's not really working well, fine. So you can see that some, that some things have been parallelized, but <laughs> it's not rendering gracefully. Um, we are looking on other alternatives, including graphs to uh, manage creating the graph. And uh, in future, uh, you may have some interaction on this graph. For example, if something fails at this level, to be able to uh, re uh, relaunch the, the flow at, at this level one. So you just have to re-execute a new flow from the beginning. And, and other features, and most probably some DSL improvements, but uh, at this uh, first step, to today the plugin is a 0 0.3 release, so we are not, strictly speaking, general availability and so on and so on. It's uh, an explanatory uh, plugin, but we have released it so you can test it and give feedback and contribute. And uh, especially we are trying, we will work on the implementation to make it as asynchronous as possible, so that it don't create load on your masters and that you can uh, restart easily uh, running flow. Um, is there a way uh, to pass parameters between builds? Oh, we didn't pass parameters. It's stupid. How can you make a flow without passing parameter? Just a bit in your eyes. Oh. Um, yeah, especially I would like my job, let's say, my job C to use the build number of my job A. Okay, so you just have to use the uh, groovy syntax for name parameters, so it's just the same. You type the name of the parameter and you type the value of the parameter, so I think it's something like uh, that. Uh, build build number, yeah. That number. Okay, and what is this B variable? Um, I don't know. I don't know. Where is it defined? Did you define it earlier? No. Ah, oh, you didn't define. Oh, you have to get the result, the execution of the build of the job A build. Yeah, I'm using Lion, so you have to switch in the other size to <laughs> the scroll. It's B. Oh, just. You okay, just B is just an abstract build, so you can access any runtime variable of your execution, of your previous execution. And you also, there is a special variable, the upstream variable that uh, lets you access an upstream job if your workflow itself has been triggered for another job. So for example, if you have a first job that is just polling the SM, that will just create, uh, compile the, the first binaries, and then trigger a complete flow with, you can retrieve the upstream to get the commit ID, to get a build number of the initial uh, initial commit. Okay, it's time. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Mathieu. Thank you.